Thank you all. Welcome to another session of Management Principles and Applications and today we'll discuss followership. So, uh, you know, Aristotle once said that he who cannot be a good follower cannot be a leader. So you have to experience the followership to be a leader. Leadership and followership are so closely interrelated. One is the cause and effect of the other. So effective leadership is affected by the followers. Achieving the organizational goals requires not only effective leaders, but also effective followers. Without good followers, there would be no leaders. So the concept of leaders and followers is pretty fluid and it is interchangeable. In life, no person is always a leader or a follower. So they are interchangeable. These are the roles which a person undertakes from time to time. A manager is a leader for his subordinates, but at the same time, he is follower to his uh, boss or, uh, you know, the superior, right? So everyone is a follower at some point in time or in some group. Leaders and followers are influenced by each other all the time. The leader influences the followers to work towards a goal. The follower support and active involvement help managers become better leaders. So it also exposes the shortcomings of ineffective leaders as well. So with this we come to what is exactly followership. So followership is the willingness to cooperate in working towards the accomplishment of defined goals while demonstrating a high degree of interactive teamwork. Effective followers are active participants, they are partners in creating the leadership process. So followers permit leaders to establish and keep themselves in control of a situation that is productive, efficient and people oriented as well. So followership is the willingness of the members to actively work towards the, the goals. So followership is not at all passive or mindless performance of the assigned work. It involves actively following the leader and contributing productively. So a good follower adds synergy to the leader-follower relationship, right? So leaders may set the goals, but it is the followers who help in implementation and achievement of objectives. The followers should be able and willing to take initiative, work independently, and be accountable for their works. Effective followership helps in establishing good work ethics, high morale, focus on goals, and high productivity. Followership demonstrates the capacity to willingly follow a leader. Can you have a leader without followers? No. The role of followers is not to be mindlessly implementing the ideas as I told you. So their role is to help the leaders become effective while remaining true to their own values and essential needs, demonstrating self-management skills and being effective individual contributors even in the absence of leadership, right? Now, followership is a straightforward concept. It is the ability to take direction well, to get in line behind a program, to be part of team, to deliver on what is expected of you. It gets a bit of a bad rap. Why? Because, oh, he's a follower. But how well the followers follow is probably just as important to enterprise success as how well the leaders lead. The label excellent follower can be backhanded compliment. It is not a reputation you necessarily want if you are seeking higher corporate office. So there is something of a stigma to followership skills. Pity because the practical reality is one does not reach progressively more responsible leadership positions without demonstrating an ability to follow and function effectively in the group. You do not join as directly as a CEO. You, uh, you know, rise up the ladder by, by being a follower. The fact is that in organizations, everybody is both a leader and follower, depending on the circumstances, which adds to the paradox of followership stigma. Now, followership may take the backseat to leadership, but it matters. It matters a lot. 
Why? Because where leadership is a failure, not much gets done or what does get done is not what was supposed to get done. It is followership problems that manifest themselves in a poor work ethic, bad morale, distraction from goals, unsatisfied customers, lost opportunities, high costs, product quality issues and weak competitiveness to name some. At the extreme, weak leadership and weak followership are two sides of the same coin and the consequence is always the same. Organizational confusion and poor performance. So we have to inculcate a good followership, a good following of the decisions made by the leader in, in if, if we want the organization to become a successful one. Now we come to the qualities of followers. What a good follower must possess so that organizational goals can be achieved effectively. The first is the judgment. Now, you don't have to follow the leader blindly, right? So followers must take a direction, but they have an underlying obligation to the enterprise to do so only when the direction is ethical and proper. So the key is having the judgment to know the difference between a directive that your leader gives on how to proceed that you do not agree with and directive that is truly wrong. So no one disputes that good judgment is critical to being a good leader. It is just as important in the follower shows enough good judgment as a follower and you usually end up getting a shot at being the leader. Something of an aside but there is a line that I have always liked about judgment and that is good judgment comes from experience experience comes from bad judgments so uh, only when you know that you took certain judgments or some decisions which went wrong you know that you don't have to take them so it was addison who knew 100 ways not to make a bulb and then 101st uh, time you know he knew the formula of uh, how to make a bulb so second, work ethic. Good followers are good workers. They are diligent, motivated, committed, pay attention to detail and make the effort. Leaders have a responsibility to create an environment that permits these qualities, but regardless, it is the responsibility of the follower to be a good worker. So there is no such thing as a bad worker who is a good follower. Then third is competence. The follower cannot follow properly unless competent at the task that is directed by the leader. It is the obligation of the leader to assure that followers are competent. Sometimes things go wrong because the follower is not competent at the task at the hand. When this happens, leaders should blame themselves, not the follower. A sign of poor leadership is blaming followers for not having skills they do not have. So you have to assign the tasks properly is what is expected out of a leader. Fourth is honesty. The follower has to be honestly following the leader. So in essence as well as in words. So if it is something like you know uh, you know the famous judgment to be hanged Till death so initially it uh, you know when the first judgment was given it was given as to be hanged so one lawyer one smart lawyer he said okay hang this man and after just two seconds he said now bring him down because the court judgment the words were hang him it was then it was amended again and was kept in the law as to be hanged till death. So it's, you know, the words and their essence, they can be different. So you have to honestly follow the leader in essence. So the follower owes the leader an honest and forthright assessment of what the leader is trying to achieve and how. This is especially the case when the follower feels the leader's agenda is seriously flawed. Respect and politeness are important, but 
that said it is not acceptable for the followers to sit on their hands while an inept leader drives the proverbial bus over the cliff so good leaders are grateful for constructive feedback for their team bad leaders do not welcome feedback and here followers have to tread very carefully if the situation is serious enough considerations should be given to going above the leader in question for guidance then the next one is courage the followers need to be honest with those who lead them they also need the courage to be honest it takes real courage to confront a leader about concerns with the leader's agenda or worse the leader himself or herself it is not for not that churchill called courage the foremost of the virtues for upon it all others depend from time to time it takes real courage to be a good follower then discretion a favorite saying in the world war 2 was loose lips sink ships sports teams are fond of the expression what you hear here let it stay here followers owe their enterprise and their leaders discretion talking about work matters inappropriately is at best unhelpful and more likely harmful so discretion just means keeping your mouth shut it should be easy but many find it next to impossible bluntly you cannot be a good follower and be indiscreet so everybody who works at the enterprise has a duty of care indiscretion is not care it is carelessness right loyalty good followers respect their obligation to be loyal to their enterprise loyalty to the enterprise and its goal is particularly important when there are problems interpersonal or otherwise with a particular leader followers who are not loyal are inevitably a source of difficulty they create problems between team members they compromise the achievement of goals they waste everybody's time they are a menace so loyalty is not a synonym for a lap dog rather its essence is strong allegiance and commitment to what the organization is trying to do followers should remember that their obligation is to enterprise not a given leader at a given point in time right then the next is ego management so good followers have their egos under control they are team players in the fullest sense of the concept they have good interpersonal skills success for good followers relates to performance and goal achievement and not personal recognition and self promotion so sounds too good to be true and often it is it is difficult but the best organizations tie advancement and reward to performance and goal achievement as hard as that may be to do so followership will always be in the shadow of leadership that is known to all of us but there are no leaders without followers and ongoing success with weak followers will usually prove elusive it is true that an organization is only as good as its leaders it is only as good as its followers as well who would not benefit from giving some thought to how they could be better followers such thought may actually hasten your trip to the leadership position you actually want so it is a good food for thought that whatever is being told to you uh as a follower you should be following it so if there are teachers there are parents there are counselors who are telling you how to be successful and through some books so how much you follow them depends would would actually be taking you to the place where you want to be think about it now we come to kelly's five followership styles so what did call kelly say said that like good leaders good followers need to develop some sound characteristics consider a good sports team we have those who lead and those who follow at different times and for different reasons within a game so the team relies on the expertise and abilities of those with the required skill set as the team needs the skills in question now to be able to access those skills on the fly the team has to be aware of the talents available and who possesses them no one can be passive and everyone has to be a good thinker 
In fact, there are two key parameters that we as followers need to display. What these two uh, important parameters are critical thinking and active behavior. So you can think critically about the uh, directions given to you and active behavior that you are actively doing something. So the critical thinking is where we are mindful of what is going on around us and of what the team needs for their outcome to be achieved. It is not about us, it is about the organizational goal. Active behavior is where we don't sit back and wait for others to put their hands up. We get on and do it. If we are the best qualified. Now, based on these two ideas, critical thinking and active behavior, Robert Kelly thought about two continuum. The first being independent critical thinking versus dependent critical thinking and then second active versus passive behavior based on these two continua came up the five followership style model and let's see what see i was telling you about active behavior and independent critical thinking now the people with passive behavior and independent critical thinking are the alienated followers with passive behavior and dependent critical thinking you are a passive follower with independent critical thinking and active behavior, you are an effective follower. And with dependent critical thinking and active behavior, you are confirmist. And otherwise, if you can be here or here, you are a pragmatic survivor. Let's see more about, let's come to know more about. The first one was effective. Who was effective? A follower who is both critical, independent thinker and an active behaviorist they exhibit consistent behavior to all people regardless of their power in the organization and deal well with the conflict and risk they cope with change put forward their own views and stay focused on what the organization needs they understand how others see them so are very mindful they may act uh, of leadership often and use their referent expert network and information power often in the service of the organization. Kelly called them stars. Confirmist. So they are very dependent in their, uh, uh, you know, their thinking, but, but they are active behaviorists. So these type is very busy but doesn't necessarily engage their brain to think through what is they are doing they participate very willingly but don't question orders they will avoid conflict at all costs and take the quietest path but will defend their boss to loyal extremes kelly called them the yes people think of a two-year-old who doesn't want to do something and just goes floppy this is the passive follower they don't engage their brain enough, nor do they take the corrective action. So they do not take action. They do not have a critical thinking. So Robert Kelly called them the sheep. While not showing any initiative, nor responsibility, this follower type can be the result of micromanagers or a negative over-controlling and blame-oriented culture. Then is alienated. These followers thinks extremely well, but for some reason often snips from the sidelines. Hame kya? They have got stuck where they are and they are very negative and feel they have lost their power. They have seen too much, have become bitter in the work from being passed over for promotion or from having stayed too long in one position. Then comes pragmatic survival is the follower type. Uh, you know, I think of as the organizational cannery in the mind shaft. They can flip between different followership styles to suit each situation and our, our early warning system when the organization's culture is starting to change for the worse. So we all know that there are some people who can see the writing on the wall early. Identify them and use them to ensure that your work culture remains healthy at all times. So these are the survivors, pragmatic survivors, they change. Now, a uh, uh, conclusion here is that followership type is not a fixated state. 
an individual might move from one type to another depending on the external conditions, changing perceptions, as well as leadership conduct. For example, an opportunist could easily become a critic if he sees things are certainly not going in his favor. So, with all that, it is very important for a leader to conduct a periodic SWOT analysis and be honest about his or her skill set and abilities so that followers can adequately get motivated and can follow diligently. So, this was all about followership. Thank you very much.